Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be the first video in a tutorial series I'm making where I'll show how to code in Python um, a bot that will play the game Flow Free. So, for those of you who don't know what Flow Free is, is it right here on the left? So, what you got to do is uh, really simple join up the colors, fill in the grid. So, obviously, levels get more complicated as you go through. But this is the general idea. I figured um, this would be sort of a, a nice beginner project for people who like know the basics but want to move on and actually do things rather than just creating like um, I don't know what was I doing when I first started. I did like the the Project Euler challenges. Like this was the first thing I tried on my own that like was something I'd came up with and what to try and do so I figured I'd try and do it again because this this will now be the third time I've I've done it. But um the first two times I did it the first time I didn't get all the way through. It sort of like it half worked but it had bugs in it and the second time I did it was really recently, it was actually a couple of days ago. Um and I got really close to it being done. But then I didn't really like um a part of the old code that I was recycling and I couldn't be bothered retyping it all so because it, it was like really long and I don't know I just I thought there was better ways to do it so I figured I'll do it again now from scratch um, make a series out of it and hopefully people will enjoy it I know I would if I was watching someone create a bot like this um, these are the sorts of videos I like to watch so yeah hopefully people will enjoy it so if you want to follow along with this series obviously get yourself Python um, you're going to need Python you're going to need Pi Auto GUI. So most of the packages we use, um, you're going to be able to go into your command line and just type pip space install followed by the package name. Um, CV2 is a package we're going to be using. To get that, pip install doesn't work. You're going to have to, um, I think you have to go in your browser, find like the, the package for it, like the wheel file online. Um, and install it from that. I'm not an expert on installing packages and stuff. You're better off looking up some other guide on how to install these packages. Um, if you're really having trouble, leave a message below and I'll try and figure out your specific problem. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, what we're going to need? We're going to need PyAuto GUI, so we'll get that. We're going to need whoops, CV2, just get that. We're going to need numpy you've probably already got that but get it if not um is that it let me see Uh, you're going to need pill. This is the Python image and library. I'm pretty sure this is already included. Um, but you'll need to import it. And then I import a time just because time's always useful to have. You can put pauses in your script so you can watch it. Uh, so it's not going to be going too fast. So, yeah, just get those and then you're ready to go. Um, a little bit more before we start the coding. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing coding in this episode. But um, I'm just going to run through, through sort of my thought process behind it, how we're going to do it. So, step one, we're going to have something that will take an, imi like a, an image file, like capture the screen. Something like this board, it'll probably just capture the board. Um, we don't need to capture the rest, we could do that later if we decide to do that. Um, so it needs to capture the board. Then, ideally, I would like it to find out how big the board is because as you can see there's different levels so you could do like 9 by 9s and like there is 14 by 14s so I'd like it to be able to see how big the board is then I'd like it to detect where all the circles are um, so let, let's write this out so we're gonna capture the screen we're gonna detect the size of the board we're gonna um, locate 
the circles or the colors um, they'll probably get saved to a numpy array and then we'll solve the array so now this will all be done without writing on the screen or whatever or detecting the screen this will just be done in the program um, then we're going to need some way of drawing the array to the screen and then we're done so obviously the python imaging library and cv2 um, cv2 is like a as far as i'm aware like an image processing package um, i'm not certain on this but cv2 has a lot of stuff in like for blurring and edge detection um, circle detection line detection uh, a lot of useful stuff like that so we're going to use cv2 for that pill the python imaging library is what we'll use to grab the screen numpy is what we'll use for our arrays because Python doesn't have arrays built in. Uh, you need NumPy for that. PyAuto GUI is the package we'll use to control the mouse and actually draw stuff. Um, time, obviously, to put sleeps in or whatever. Uh, probably won't use time too much, might not even use it at all. I would imagine we will because we'll probably need delays in. Um, obviously, you don't want a computer just flying through as fast as it possibly can. Uh, drawing stuff on the screen, especially when we're initially like debugging it, we probably want it to be quite slow so we can see what's going on. Um, as for solving the array, so like solving the board, um, the way I looked at it before, and like the way the best way I've came up with so far, um, an initial sort of what well, it'll be sort of a an algorithm. This part. There'll be different steps it can do, but the first step and the most powerful step I think that I've found is basically forced moves. So you'll see here this yellow one. Um, it can't actually go up, it can't go right, it can't go down, so it has to go left. So we know that move has to be right. Um, there's also this orange one has to go here, this blue one has to go here, this red one has to go here. And now, now we've got these in, we know this has to go down, we know it has to go down again actually. And then we can see it's right next to the yellow, so it's probably going to go there, but it's not certain. But now this orange has to go up here, and the orange has to go here, and we know this orange connects to here. So that would all be forced. Now, this could go left or it could go down, um, but this one here can only go up. So as you can see, that has to connect to there. So now we've done two. Oops. Um, blue has to go here. Red has to go to here, because obviously it's got nowhere else to go around this corner. Green has to go up here and here. Now this has to go up. You can see like it's really easy to solve the board with just forced moves. Um, obviously when you move on to the bigger boards, like 14 by 14s, it gets a lot harder to do that. So we'll give it a go on this, but I can't imagine it's going to work. Um, yeah, I don't see a single forced move there actually. So basically, as you can see, like it doesn't work on 14 by 14s, but the the same sort of principle. Like my my thinking behind it is, it's never going to be wrong to look for forced moves and play them. So that's going to be the first thing. And then what we'll do is, once we've got it working and like solving these simple five by fives, we'll look at adding other features to it. So for example, on the 14 by 14 one. It could um, say find the two nearest ones and join them and see if that helps or it could say these two here if I was playing the game I would probably connect these two because I don't know why but it feels like going on the outer rim here is probably a good move um, rarely would you well I suppose something we could implement here's a, a better way so something we could implement is it would have to go around um, this purple one because if it goes through here obviously that purple one's now isolated and can't reach the other purple one so we could implement something sort of not cutting them off I don't know how we do this this would probably be difficult but I don't know we'll cross that bridge when we come with it there's always just the pick a random color and make a random move option as well um, and like have a save state where you go back to if you end up not solving the board or something I'm not sure, we'll cross the bridge when we come with For now, I just want to get it working with the force moves. I want to get it drawn boards, I want to get it going fast. 
and I want to see how many boards it can get through in like four minutes on a five by five time trial mode. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, subscribe if you want to see the rest of the series, and thanks for watching.